All right. So I am going to share my screen and we're gonna get started here. Hopefully this all works because like I said before, um, Zoom is not the platform I'm used to. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So I am going to, can you see my screen? Can somebody give me a, do you see just the slide or do you see the presenter view with my notes below, Marilyn? We see the presenter view. Okay, I'm gonna do just the slide then. Come on now, work with me. There you go. All right, so here we go. I printed off my notes just in case I needed to have them. Um, <laughs> so again, thank you um, for joining us tonight. Your job is incredibly important. Um, the work you do as corresponding secretary for your chapter helps us keep the business of our state moving forward and the business of your local chapter moving forward as well. So I'm going to cover a lot of things tonight. Um, we have, and I hope I can see if people are trying to, yep, I'm just gonna keep admitting people. Um, We're going to go through some tools and tips and I'm going to be reading off a of paper now. So I'm not going to be looking at the screen all the time. Um, tools and tips for fulfilling your responsibilities. In this section, we will become familiar with materials that you'll use. And um, we'll go through where to find things on the website so you know how to find forms. And instead of taking you to the website, I've pulled screenshots and put them in here. So you can reference those as you are needing to find things, as you're filling out forms for corresponding secretary responsibilities. We'll talk about membership records and keeping track of membership records for your chapter. And then we will also talk about annual reports. So we will keep moving ahead here. Come on now. Oh my goodness. Oh, my slideshow will not advance. Well, bear with me just one moment, please. I thought I had this all figured out and clearly I didn't. So, oh my gosh, I need to stop sharing for a minute. So sorry, bear with me, bear with me. Like I said, Zoom is not my platform that I am used to using. So let's try this and see where we're at now. Okay, back in action. So three key areas um, that we will cover are the tools and tips, the membership records, and the annual reports. First, we're going to go through some tools. So for corresponding secretaries, a key recommendation is for all officers to participate in their officer transition training. So once you take over your office, it's recommended that you meet with the person that served in that office prior to you so they can sit with you and kind of talk through their responsibilities and show you what your um, responsibilities are as an officer. The Constitution is also something that you will want to be familiar with. It's the purple um, book, Constitution and Bylaws and Standing Rules of the PEO Sisterhood. That is a valuable resource for you to use as you are learning how to fulfill your duties as corresponding secretary. The instructions to officers of local chapters, the IOLC, if there's one thing that you remember out of this training tonight, it's the IOLC. That has all of the information that you will need for your duties and what you need to do with each situation that comes up in your chapter. And then there are a plethora of resources on the international website, and I'll show you some of those as we go through. So this hopefully looks familiar. This is the um, first page of the IOLC for corresponding secretaries. 
there are nine pages to your document for instructions to local chapters for corresponding secretaries. And I am going to try, if I read everything right, how to, I'm going to try to show you the complete IOLC. So Marilyn, can you tell me if you see the IOLC on your screen now? Yes, I do. Ooh, something worked right. So this is the picture that I just showed you. This is your retention record for corresponding secretary. It tells you what it is and it tells you how long to keep it. So if you have any questions about how long to maintain any records that you're responsible for, the very first page of the IOLC will tell you that information. If we go down to the second page, you will see forms and process for any membership activity. And when you look under membership activity, it has all of these different possible scenarios, what your action is and what you need to submit. So if you have a member who um, has a name change and you're not familiar with what to do, you can refer to your IOLC. It will tell you what to do and where to do that. If we keep going down, it has general information about what supplies you need to have, um, officer transition training, your duties, how to give reports at a chapter meeting, and then information about the ceremony of, of initiation. When we look further on down, chapter membership, it talks about the general enrollment book, and we'll talk more about these things as we go through the training tonight, um, but it has information on what you need to do with chapter membership, member ID search, if there's an increase in membership, either by initiation, transfer in, or reinstatement, it very clearly spells out how you need to report that. If you have a decrease in membership where someone transfers out, passes away, or goes inactive, it will show you how to do that. Um, and then if there are updates for members in your chapter, if there, it tells you what to do if someone has a change of name, a change of address, or how to fill out a notice of member in your area. And I'll talk through all of that later on in the slideshow. And then also in the um, instruction of officers to local chapters, it talks about what you need to do to report officers, delegate to convention and local chapter project chairs. And I will show you how to do all of that. And then it talks about annual reports, which were just completed or were wrapping up with most chapters in the state. There also is this really great flow chart that shows the process for if someone wants to transfer to a different chapter, if someone wants to reinstate their membership from being an inactive member, and if someone wants to reinstate and transfer. This flowchart is step-by-step step and will help you sort through the steps that you are responsible for and all of the things that need to happen. So that's a lot of information in the IOLC. We're not going through it word for word because it's a huge document with nine pages, but I wanted you to know where to find that so you could reference that if you need to. So hopefully you're back to my slideshow now and you see that first page of IOLC. So we'll keep moving forward. So the first thing we want to talk about is the corresponding secretary's monthly report to the chapter. Sorry, I have to let people in. Admit all. All right. The corresponding secretary's monthly report to the chapter is only given at the first regular meeting of each month, but the correspondence is read at every regular meeting. So if you have two, if you have a month where you have two business meetings, two regular meetings, you will only give your report at that first meeting of the month, but you will read correspondence at the first and the second meeting. When you're reading correspondence, make sure that you state the name of the sender before you read that correspondence so people know who that's coming from as you are reading through it. 
All electronic correspondence received by the corresponding secretary may be distributed to the entire chapter prior to the meeting. So if you receive electronic correspondence, you can forward that to your chapter prior to the meeting if that is something that your chapter would like you to do. You would then reference that in your report and read that um, and just review that during the meeting. You wouldn't have to read the whole thing. Any correspondence that you've received that requires action, you will need to give to the president. So again, you'll provide your report at the first meeting of the month, but you'll read correspondence at both of those meetings if you have two meetings a month. Oh gosh, every time I have to stop sharing and go back in, every time I stop to let somebody in, it kicks me out of my slideshow. So I'm not going to let people in after this so we can keep moving. Um, all right, we're back in action. So, oh my gosh, there we go. I already covered all of that. So this is what your monthly report to the chapter looks like. You will again fill this out for the first meeting of every month. This is just the top of that, but I wanted you to have a, a picture in your mind of what that looks like. Each year after you receive the release from Iowa State Chapter for your annual reports, you will read that annual report to your chapter noting the final membership count. You will report to your chapter the total number of active members, the number of members becoming inactive, and any other membership changes. And that released report will come via email from Don Gibson. We are still working on finishing up um, annual reports with several chapters. So it may be a couple more weeks until you receive your release. But once that comes, you will read that at your chapter meeting as part of your correspondence. When a member transfers out to another chapter, the PEO membership department will send an email to her previous chapter as notification of this transfer. When received, this notification letter must be read at the next regular meeting. The transfer out date which is indicated in the notification letter, is to be recorded on the membership roster. And we will talk about your membership roster here in a little bit. It's important to note that a letter, letter of acceptance for an invitation to transfer out and or a letter of reinstatement is read as the last item of correspondence when you give your report. The reinstatement date for that member is the date the reinstatement fee is actually received by the chapter, and there is a $35 reinstatement fee. The receipt of the fee is usually considered the date it is presented to a chapter during a business meeting. For a combined reinstatement and chapter, the date the, accept the acceptance to transfer letter is read to the chapter is noted as the official transfer end date on the member update form in the annual report. Please note that a reinstatement letter should be read only when the reinstatement fee has been received. The annual report will be talked about here in a little bit. So let's, let's just review that again. If someone is reinstating, meaning they're going from inactive to active, once they pay that reinstatement fee, that's when you will read their letter stating that they would like to go active again. So, Here's the step-by-step -step process. If someone wants to be reinstated from active, inactive to active, the chapter will receive the letter and the fee. You as a corresponding secretary will record that as the date that, that the fee was received by the chapter, and then you read the reinstatement letter at the chapter meeting. If someone wants to be reinstated and they're transferring into your chapter, You'll receive that letter when the fee is received. Um, you will read that at a chapter meeting and then that will be the transfer date. It's a lot of details and step-by-step, -step, but again, in your IOLC on page nine, it has those flow charts I just showed you that tells you step-by-step -step what you need to do. So 
let's look at how we're going to find all of those reports that we just talked about that you may need to go in and do. So this is from the international website. And as a reminder, the Iowa PEO website and the international PEO website both require unique usernames and passwords now. You have to set the, your username and password up for Iowa and for international. Those two websites don't talk to each other, so you have to set them up separately, though you can use the same username and password for both websites. That way it's a little bit easier to keep track of. So when you go into the international website, you log in with your username and password, you will select, you'll see where it says resources, and you're going to select resource library. After you select resource library, you'll see this screen that has this search and filter. There are multiple ways that you can look for what you need to, to do, what form you need to fill out online. The first is this search box here. You can just put in what you're looking for. I put in corresponding secretary and it brought up multiple pages. I only took a screenshot of the first page, but there are multiple pages of things that come up that are related to corresponding secretary duties. You can search by topic. So if you want to report the election of officers, I just typed in election of officers, and here's my report that I would fill out. You can also sort by audience type. So in this drop down, it has all of the different officers and projects. So I selected local chapter corresponding secretary. And again, it pulled up everything that is associated with your duties as a corresponding secretary. The search filter is pretty forgiving. On the previous version of the international website, you had to be almost exact with what you were looking for. Though on the updated website, it's a it's a bit more forgiving and you can be, you can just enter some keywords and it will pull up everything associated with that. So when you need to find something online, this is how you will find it. And again, this will be, this recording will be housed on our Iowa website. So if you think, oh, I need to go in and report something. I don't remember how to find it. You could go to this recording and look at these screenshots online. You also can get to those same forms from our Iowa website. So you would go to the PEO Iowa website. And when you sign on there, you're going to come over here to where it says resources. And then you will select chapter officer and committee information and forms. And that will take you to this lovely document that we have. Here is your corresponding secretary section. You would then click on the link for what you need. So if you need to fill out report of election of officers, you would click on that link and it will redirect you to the international website. You'll have to enter your username and password, but after you do that, that report of election of officers will pull up for you. So you can get to things through the Iowa website as well. So you can choose which you prefer to navigate. All right. So we're going to talk about member ID. As we begin to discuss membership records, it's important to note that the member ID number is the only number used to track PEO members. This slide shows where the member ID can be found on the PEO record, and it's right here, chapter letters and state, and then the member ID. The glossary section of the IOLC, which we just looked at, outlines the additional ways to determine the member ID number. These numbers are a critical component for all membership records, including annual reports, and they are required for ordering supplies and when registering for convention of international chapter. Membership ID, member ID numbers can also be found using the member ID search on the PEO International website. So, this is a, a, a screenshot of what you will look for when you need to look up a member ID. And I have a couple more slides to show you that. So when you log in to international website, instead of going to resources, you will go to membership. 
you will select member ID search, then access member ID search, and then it will bring up that screen. It's important to note on this screen that the first name must match at least the first two letters of the member's name. So for me, I would just have to put in J-E, but the last name must match the full last name. So you'll wanna make sure if you are looking up a member ID number for someone in your chapter that you have the correct spelling of their last name because it will not let you move forward without that. All right. The following three documents are the core items used for tracking and reporting your chapter's membership. It's the member update form, chapter membership history or CMH, and then membership roster. These documents are essential for maintaining accurate membership records. Details about each of these documents are provided again in the IOLC. So you may be catching on that the IOLC is the document that you will want to become familiar with. The member update form is used to notify the PEO membership department of all membership activity in your chapter, including a member's change in name and or address and or email address. This is the only form used for this purpose. It is important to submit these forms in a timely manner to the membership department department using the online form to ensure that membership records are accurate. Before submitting the member update form to the membership department, it's necessary that the appropriate entries are made in your membership records. If the PEO membership department receives a change of address submitted directly by a member, a notification email will be sent to the corresponding secretary. So you as the corresponding secretary can choose to be the person for your chapter that will provide any member updates. So again, if someone has a change in their name, they move, they have a, have a different address, they change their email, you can report that or chapter members can report their own individual changes online as well. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So again, you would go in the in, uh, international website, membership, and then you would look for the access member update form. You'll click on that. You're going to select if it's a new initiate, so you're entering that new information. If you are changing information for a member other than yourself, or if you are changing membership information for yourself. So I selected myself just to pull these screenshots. It auto filled my name, my chapter letters, and my address. If you select for someone else, then you will need to have their membership number because that will be necessary for this autofill portion. It also auto filled my um, zip code. It gives the option to check because if I'm moving, maybe I'm only moving somewhere else in Des Moines because I live in Des Moines. Maybe I'm moving across town, so I still live close enough to participate in my chapter's activities. Maybe I'm moving to Waterloo, so I want to transfer to a chapter near my new address, or maybe I do not want to transfer. And if you select do not want to transfer, then it will give you a place to put in the reason that you don't want to transfer. So you'll wanna check one of these three. If it's a change in email address, you'll need to select if it is an update or change to the existing email address, or if for some reason, the person you're reporting for is no longer going to have email, you need to select that box so that it can be removed. And then there's information about phone number. Um, you can select if there is no phone for that person, or if it's an update to your contact phone number, and then it asks about cell phone. If the cell phone number is the same number above, that auto pulled my number in. Um, you can add a cell phone number or you can remove a cell phone number down below. And then if it's a member name change, you would click that box and it would take you further. I stopped there because I didn't need to change any information and I was afraid if I kept going, it might change my information and that would not be helpful. So that's how you get to the uh, membership update form. The next thing we're going to talk about 
is the notice of member in your area. So this is when a chapter member moves and wants to transfer to another chapter. You will submit the change of address and contact information on the member update form and complete that notice of member in your area form. So I already showed you how to do the member update form. That's what we just walked through. You will also need to fill out the notice of member in your area form. This is found on the international website and you would log in as I've already shown you on other screenshots under membership and a notice of member in your area. You also can find this linked from the Iowa PEO website. So then you would fill out the information for both of those and submit that and that will help trigger um, PEO to send emails to chapters in that area, letting them know that a member has moved it into their area. All right, membership records. The chapter membership history record replaced the chapter's general enrollment book. Those books where everybody signed and we hand wrote, not the president's book, but where we hand wrote who joined the chapter and the date, those ledgers, those enrollment books are to be retained with your supplies for the life of the chapter. So we're no longer entering new initiates into that general enrollment book, but we need to keep that general enrollment book. The CMH is provided by the membership department and must be kept in your corresponding secretary files for the life of the chapter. The chapter membership history record lists all PEOs who have been a, who have been a member of your chapter, except for those who died prior to 1980. Information about chapter members who died prior to 1980 will be found in that general enrollment book that you keep with your records. No entries are to be made on the chapter membership history. It serves solely as your chapter's historical record of membership. An updated copy will be provided by the membership department upon request. However, it's recommended that requests for updated copies of the CMH be made in increments of at least five years. So they don't want chapters every year um, reaching out asking for an updated chapter membership history. They would like it to be a five-year increment. Don Gibson, who is our um, paid assistant, treasurer, and secretary, also can pull a chapter membership history for chapters if they request that, but it would be that same thing, five-year increment. Another record, which is the membership roster, provides membership details for your chapter that complement the information provided in the chapter membership history. The membership roster record is a printout of your chapter members who were living during the past PEO fiscal year, which is March 1 through February 28th or 29th, depending on if it's leap year. It includes details of membership activity that occurred during the year, including initiations, transfers in and transfers out, deaths, reinstatements, and members' name, address, and email changes. This should be printed by the chapter corresponding secretary once the chapter has been released by the state. So with annual reporting, you may or may not have been a part of that if you were corresponding secretary last year. But with that annual reporting, there is the option to download and save your chapter membership roster. Hopefully, your president or corresponding secretary did that when you completed your record, your annual reports. If you did not, fear not, um, you can request a chapter membership record from Don Gibson, but not until this summer because she is bogged down right now in annual reports and then she'll roll, roll right into convention season. So just remember moving forward next year, when you complete the annual reports online, you will want to download and save your chapter membership roster. The annual reports were to be submitted by March 10th. Corresponding secretary plays a very important role in completing this report. There is a training video on the international website. So 
I would recommend before next March, um, when we do annual reports again, that you go in and you watch that training video. It's step-by-step -step of how to complete the annual report. Right. In addition to completing annual reports, you will complete other duties as part of the annual report process. Corresponding secretaries must provide input on three additional records. During odd numbers years, there's a fourth record, which is for a delegate for international convention. So entries for the following reports must be submitted online by you or by your chapter technology contact. So it's report of election of officers of local chapter. Even if officers are continuing from year to year, that report still needs to be done so that PEO knows that that is the current officer. If they're continuing year to year and it's not reported, we will get a report saying that chapter JMJY, that's my chapter, did not report officers for the current year. So it's important that every year you fill that out, regardless of whether it's new officers or continuing officers. If your officers change mid-year for some reason, if there's a vacancy, someone moves away, someone is ill and has to step down, you need to go in and update that officer information at that time so that it's current in our system. You'll also complete the local chapter report for project chairs and the delegate and alternate for state convention. And again, if it's, um, Odd years, you'll fill out the delegate for international convention as well. So here is what you will see when you go in to complete your report of election of officers. This again is on the international website. Um, we looked a few slides ago at how to go into the resource library and you would search for report of election of officers. This is the form you will see when you're filling that out. This is what will come up when you look for report of project chairs. And you will see that it has every project and a chair needs to be put in. You will use the member ID. So you will need to know the member ID of your ELF um, chair for your chapter, your PCD chair for your chapter, your IPS chair for your chapter, and you'll see all of those. So you'll need to make sure that you have the member ID. If you have not completed those reports, which is the election of officers report and the project chair report, please go in and do that um, very soon. Almost all communication from PEO comes electronically now. So we need to make sure that we have the correct people in there. You also will report your delegate for Iowa State Convention. This is the screen that you will see when you are reporting delegate. And this is the, the page where you enter it. So you'll enter your chapter letters. In the drop down. you'll select Iowa. And then in Iowa, you are reporting one delegate and one alternate. All right, let's talk about annual reports. You will need to keep your chapter membership history and your membership roster together in your files. Although the general enrollment book is no longer used to record membership activity, you also need to keep that in your files for the life of the chapter. And I mentioned that already. There are so many trainings for officers on the PEO International website in the resource section. You will find um, unlimited really resources on there. PEO International has developed a whole series on leadership. So if you want to kind of hone your leadership skills in PEO or even for your own personal use or your work life, um, go and check out the leadership section under, under the PEO International website. They have done a really nice job of pulling a bunch of resources together. So I would suggest just hopping on the international website and looking around and looking at all of those resources. 
So let's review the key points about the duties of your Office of Corresponding Secretary. Tools and tips for fulfilling your responsibilities. The Most of the instructional materials and forms you need are available on the website. And again, I've shown you where to find those. Become familiar with that information regarding your duties and really become familiar with the IOLC. If you don't have that, either print it out or download it on your computer, that will answer almost every question you have about what you need to do as corresponding secretary. Three membership records are vital for the corresponding secretaries. It's essential that membership activity be reported in a timely manner on the member update form that we looked at. Become familiar with and learn the difference between the chapter membership history and the membership roster. Those two things are different. The accuracy of your chapter's membership records depends on your efficient management of those records. And really, if you keep up during the year with changes in membership information, it will make annual reporting go so much smoother. If you wait until annual reporting time to update addresses and changes, it will take much longer. So as things happen with your membership, try to get those entered right away. It will make life easier. Annual reports are completed every March and submitted electronically. The election of officers and delegates to convention and appointment of project chairs are reported by you or in your absence, your um, chapter's technology chair. Thank you for what you do for PEO and thank you for attending this training session. The time you are committing to serve as your chapter's corresponding secretary is so appreciated. Um, we could not do our work as a state board without you doing your work as a local chapter officer. If you have any questions about procedures, um, please go ahead and reach out to us at any time. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, we are here as a resource for you and we are happy to answer any questions. I work full time. I'm still at work tonight. Um, this is a school. If you, you know, have worked in a school, you might recognize these lovely built-ins from probably the 1950s. I think every school had them. So many of us work full time. Um, we might not get back to you immediately, but we will get back to you. Um, so thank you. That was a lot of information. I'm sorry about the difficulties with the screen sharing and having to get in and out as I admitted more people. Really sorry for the folks I quit admitting. Um, but I will stop talking. And if anyone has questions, feel free to either raise your hand or just unmute and ask them. And I will do my best to answer them. I have a question about the chapter membership history. Okay. Um, are those, how is that different from the roster? I know you said it is different, but how is it different? Sure. So the chapter membership history is the, the lifetime membership of your chapter. It does not include anyone who died prior to 1980. That will be kept in that general enrollment book, but your chapter membership history has everyone that's been a member of your chapter through the life of your chapter. Your chapter membership roster only has those members of your chapter who were alive during the past PEO fiscal year. So it will, so you may have had, like I know in my chapter, our chapter membership history has well, I'm a, I'm a merged chapter now, so we have a couple hundred people in our chapter membership history. But on our chapter membership roster, we have 39 people because that those were the 39 people who were alive and active in our chapter last year. Does that help? Yes. And where okay. do we where do we find the chapter history forms? Those are, um, hopefully there's one in your supplies that wow. the previous corresponding secretary had. If not, you can reach out to PEO International and request a chapter of a copy of your chapter membership history, or 
the summer after convention, you can reach out to Don Gibson, our paid assistant secretary and treasurer for Iowa, and she will get you a copy of your chapter membership history. She just doesn't have capacity to do that um, right now with annual reports and then rolling into convention. With your chapter roster, hopefully when annual reports were completed, someone remembered to download that, though this is only year two of annual reports. So that may not have happened and that's okay. You also can reach out to Don Gibson for that chapter membership roster, but not until after convention. Okay, got it. Thank okay, you. yeah. Um, Sybil, did you have a question? All right. I still can't hear you, unfortunately, for some reason. You're unmuted, but we're not able to hear you. If you want to throw your question in the chat, I can answer it that way. Okay. I wonder what the oh, heck's the matter. You're on now. Yes. Oh, well. I can hear you now, Sybil. You okay, can talk good. now. I can hear you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was just puzzled on how to navigate the new web page. That's, that has been my problem. Um, International or Iowa? Well, I don't know. I just am figuring how to get into it and stay into it. I, I have in my little press bag all the, the documents that you were talking about and Yes. And I could access them before we had the big change. I just didn't know how to find them. So that, that's going to be, that's going to take some work. So I would, for most, you, like I said, you can link to documents from the Iowa PEO website. It's probably easier to go on to the international website, quite honestly, because you're, you're going to have to enter the password a couple times either way. Do you have your username and password for the international website? So yes, if you go, go on that and then just select resources. Um, if you, once you log in, select resources and then resource library, that will pull up all of those screens that I was showing with the different ways to search for documents. There will be a search and filter. Just go on there and play around. You can't break anything because right. it's read only. We don't have the ability to make changes to it, but your best friend is going to be that search bar. Um, once you go to resource library, Put in what you're looking for, and it should pull up that document for you. This okay. is I'm going to, okay. I'm unable to get into the international website, so I won't be able to update election of officers until that is straightened out. Am I, you're able to get into Iowa. So if you're unable to get into the international website right now, um, you can put in a help desk ticket with international. You can call international or you can ask your technology chair in your chapter. If they have access to an international website, um, they could go in and do that for you as well. If all that fails, email myself or one of the other board members with the information for your officers and we'll go in and enter that for you. Don Gibson or any of the executive board can help with that if no one in your chapter is able to access that website at this point in time. Um, what if we only have one delegate, just report one and not an alternate if not known? If you, if no one has stepped up to be the alternate yet, um, that's unfortunate and hopefully your delegate can attend, um, but you can go ahead and report your delegate. So um, Dawn can start working on things for convention as soon as she wraps up annual reporting. How do we remove a person from the roster when they have died? So you'll go into that. Um, if you look at your IOLC, it will tell you um, how to report when someone dies. And it's on that change in membership form that we went through. And you can go in and you can report a death that way. 
You also, when you do annual reports, can report it at that point in time on your annual report. But again, the more work you do throughout the year, the easier the annual report will be. So you will most likely want to go into that member update form and report the death. Um, oh, I had to use Google, Google Chrome to get in at International. It is so interesting what browsers work for different websites. Um, and if it's not working for one browser, go ahead and try another one. Other questions? I have one. Yes, ma'am. Um, so when you fill out a form, if we're doing it online, is there a place then to submit online? Yes. So every... All of those forms, I could only go so far <laughs> with the screenshots without submitting something. And I sure in the heck um, didn't want to be submitting things for my chapter and then have them come back and say, Jenny, what are you doing? Why are you messing with our membership records? But all of those forms that I showed you will have a submit button at the bottom. You okay. will want to make sure that you hit submit to make sure that that goes in. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, the report, report, you reported the death, but they were still on the roster, um, on the chapter membership roster for the last year, they would be because they were alive during that last PEO fiscal year. You should see them come off of the roster for the next PEO year. Okay. This is Other Myrna. Question. Question. Yes, Myrna. Yes, um, from ML. Um, yes. In our inactive list, we have like 30 people that have either died or they're gone and they're never coming back. Do we purge those somehow or do we just leave them in there? So there is a process um, and you'll want to refu refer to the constitution and the IOLC. That's where everything is listed. There is a process for after so many years where you have lost contact with members where they can be removed from your chapter roster list. I do not have those memorized, um, but I can certainly look for those and we can communi communicate about that, but there is a process for removing after a certain amount of years. Um, and I can go someone through is no all at the same time. I mean, I could do like, if I know how to do it, I can go out and do all 30 yes. of them. Yep. Okay, I would like to know how to do that. So yep. let me find uh I'm, not, I'm probably not the only one. I'm sure lots of them have the situation. Myrna, what chapter are you with? Could you remind chapter me? Chapter ML in Waverly. Got it. Okay. I'll do a little research and I'll reach out to you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? I just wanted to say really quick, um, my name is Marilyn Rippey. I'm the chair of the PEO State of Iowa's membership committee. So we send you a lot of stuff as the corresponding secretary, um, but we also put a lot of pressure, I guess, on you guys because you have to get people's email addresses right when you report officers and your um, chairman or chair people. Um, so sometimes I, I might send, especially if you're in the Northeast district, I'm the person that will send you an email and say, I cannot, this email is wrong, or I can't get a hold of your, your membership person. Um, so you might get some emails like that. Um, from your district membership chair, just checking in and making sure that the emails are correct. Um, notice a member in your area. I recently moved this last summer. Mm -hmm. Since I am who I am, I contacted all the chapters in my town. But as a corresponding secretary, it's really good if your president gets that email mm -hmm. from us that you reach out as well because those people are low hanging fruit. You should be trying to get those people into your chapter mm -hmm. or or notice of a, a non-PEO. Email those people, call those people, reach out. You want those people in your chapter. You wanna grow your, your membership. So um, I just wanted to put that little plug yeah. in there. Thank uh, you, Marilyn. And we're always a resource as well. Mm -hmm. So um, 
Uh, and a lot of people, it seems when I was the uh, corresponding chap secretary for DF, I was also the membership chair. And I don't know if you guys have double duty that way or not, but um, there's a lot of those people. So just wanted to throw that out there. And thank, thank you. you for everything that you guys do. Yes. Jennifer? Um, yes, ma'am. Can, can you hear me? I can, Donna. Okay. Um, how do we know, identify messages uh, through email that come to the corresponding secretary? Will there be, what will be in the subject area? So if it's coming from me as secretary of Iowa State chapter, PEO will always be the very first thing in the subject line. And then there will be something after that, like PEO, um, updates and reminders. If it's coming from membership, I believe in Marilyn, I'm going to go back to you. It will have PEO in the subject line as well. Um, anything that comes from international in my experience also tends to have PEO in the subject line. Um, I know with all of the like, you know, people who are hacking email accounts, sometimes you're I'm hesitant to open or click on anything. Um, so as a state, we are really conscious about putting PEO in that subject line so that we're not, um, so people know that it's a safe email to open. But it won't say corresponding secretary necessarily. Not necessarily, though my, um, whatever office group I'm emailing, I always, my very first line is, greetings, local chapter presidents, greetings, local chapter corresponding secretaries. And you'll see that in your email before you even click on it. Oh, that's um, good. That's yeah. good to yeah. identify what yes. we really need to be reading. Yeah. Yes. Thank yep. you. Um, the other thing I did, I kind of just went over really quickly was the constitution. Um, the constitution is found online. Not everyone has a copy, a physical copy of it. You can request an order through supplies. They cost money. Um, so that is available online, free on the international website. So if you want access to the Constitution, that is online as well. Okay, any other questions? We're winding down to the last few minutes of our time together. Thank you for taking time tonight. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your work. And from our whole executive board, we are so thankful for you. Um, we're all volunteers. You're all volunteers. And sometimes what we think we're volunteering for looks a little different when we get in there, right? So you might have some surprises. Um, as you go through your years, corresponding secretary, if you have not filled this office before, use your sisters in your chapter, use our state membership committee, use us as executive board members. We want to be a reference for you. We're all very kind and approachable women, and we want to um, work with you to make our sisterhood in our state of Iowa strong. So thank you again. This will be posted on the Iowa website later this week, probably. I'm not sure the time you know that for your reference. And it will be there any time that you need to go back and look at the slides that I shared. So I'm going to stop recording now.